Hello, friends and colleagues. I'm Donna Lawani in Clinical Outreach at the Amen Clinics, and I'm joined by Cynthia Schwartzberg, psychotherapist and brain spotting trainer, who's a valued member of our Brain Health Certification Coaching Program. And so, Cynthia, thank you so much for joining us here today from, from Atlanta, as I'm in New York. I, I love seeing you, so thank you for being here. So, Thanks, Cynthia, Donna. I love seeing you, too. Oh, I appreciate that. And, you know, we've had such rich conversations and I, I know this has been such a difficult time, you know, for sudden change for everyone and in our way of life in the U.S. and with this coronavirus pandemic. And many are struggling with how to face this, how to talk about some of the maybe, you know, let's do a deeper dive on beneficial tools, therapies that can be used, you know, as a resource for individuals. So I'd love for you to share what is brain spotting and how does this work? How does it impact our brain? Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about brain spotting and then maybe later on we can also talk about how we're using brain spotting to help people during this time of crisis, um, especially because during such times of crisis, so many traumas sometimes surface. But to start with, brain spotting is a brain-based therapy that's based on where you look affects how you feel. So if you're thinking about something and you're feeling either excited or upset, if you look to the right or to the left or in the middle or someplace in between or your eyes just gaze on a spot, you're going to feel one way versus if you look in a different direction. And it was started by Dr. David Grand back in 2003. So that's the general experience thing that we say that brain spotting is based on where you look affects how you feel. And why it works that way is because we see not only with our eyes, but we also see with our brain. So our eyes and our brain are deeply connected in terms of how we orient ourselves in our environment and then how we're feeling about what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. That's beautifully said. So where we look affects how we feel. And you know, tell me a little bit about what that's doing as well for our physiology, for helping to calm or, you know, connect with the nervous system. How does that work? Right. So in um, therapy, for example, when a therapist, is, a brain spotting therapist is working with a client, the client will typically come in, they're talking about something, and then the therapist and the client will frame what exactly it is that's presently pressing in the moment that's bothersome to the client, or it's sometimes even pressing that the client really wants to expand and enhance in their life. So it can be used for things that are more troubling us or things that we want to expand with. But I'm going to just focus on the one to keep it simple. So when they come in and they're talking about it, then what we do is we ask the client, when you're thinking about that, how upset are you? And then where do you feel that in your body? Because we want to work with something that's in the present and that also has a body felt sense. Because what therapists have been finding is that for a therapy to really be effective now, we're wanting to try to help work with the state of going from that upset, we call it like a dysregulation into a state of regulation. Because a lot of what we have thoughts and ideas around really often originate from our physiology. So you see that, I think, in the scans, right? Yes, absolutely. We do with neuroimaging, seeing how it's affecting our brain. So we continue to advance on the science and the research. And I think that's so helpful to see how, how you know, it, it does affect us, how effective it can be over time. And um, I think being attuned, you know, to our individual clients, um, you shared this message too about following the tail of the comet, um, you know, meeting, meeting the client where they're at and that this is so client centered and as an integrative model. I'd love for you to share more about that. Yeah, so um, in the therapy, the therapist is really following the cues of the client. Uh -huh. So like when I was talking before, when they're having a session and they see something that they want to work with, the therapist and the client will find an eye position that connects to a body sensation 
for the client to then go into this focused mindfulness around whatever the issue is. But this is happening in the therapy environment. And what research has shown is that one of the primary things that helps in any therapeutic um, modality is really the relationship. Like the relationship is so key to help transformation to happen. Mm -hmm. So in brain spotting, we've really harnessed that and we call it a dual attuned process. So it's both the client therapist relationship and also the therapist is focusing on, uh, focusing on the neurophysiology of the client to help them find those brain, those eye positions, which we call the brain spot when it's lined up that way, or to track them during the session. So the therapist is not going to lead them. They're going to take the cues from the client and support them with whatever that innate wisdom of their own body is um, working out and healing. That's very powerful. I guess so there's a lot that clients can identify that they notice comes up, um, you know, sort of as it un unfolds. It seems like it's a it's sort of an unraveling of different layers and also maybe also different from my experience too um, in, in some of the trainings is just noticing what images and memories may also come up, different senses um, may, may sort of come up in that moment. That, that may emerge. So it's interesting to see what happens. And yeah. What happens. So sometimes clients will say, I smell the, you know, the aftershave that my grandfather wore, or I smell like that um, breakfast that my mother used to make me all the time, or doing myself when I was 10 years old, and then they'll describe the situation and and they'll say, there'll be a long pause, maybe some will say, I'm thinking back when I was five years old, or I see myself, I'm not sure what age it is, but I'm at this um, swimming pool with some friends, and, and then they'll go into whatever that experience was for them. So it may be, people may either... Later, or they'll see like pictures everybody will process it different because each of us really has our own internal vocabulary and the therapist is going to guide and support that for the individual they're working with that's beautiful and i think you know we were we were going to do something that helps go through this exercise to sort of try this out and um maybe do something so we talked about maybe a sharing experience um so Let's okay. go forward. Sure. So what we're going to start with is something that we'll often do at the very beginning of a training. So when I said that phrase, where you look affects how you feel, what I'll often say to somebody, so we can all, whoever's listening, try this at home in the comforts of your own home. Just take a few deep breaths. And thinking about that phrase, where you look affects how you feel. I'm going to ask you to think about something that brings you a sense of peace, joy, comfort, whatever resonates for you. And just breathing into your body and contemplating what that is for you. It could be connecting to a loved one, reading a book, going to the beach. And as you're thinking about that, just notice zero to 10, zero is like, well, I'm, I don't really feel in that mood right now. 10 is like, I, I can really sense it in my body, really strong. Because some of us may love going to the beach, but we can't right now. So that might be something that you like, but it's hard right now. So it might be a little bit lower. And then when you're thinking about it, take a moment to feel where in your body do you have a strong connection to this? Like where there's some joy or some grounded calmness. Just kind of scanning from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and notice. Where do you have some form of a connection 
to what that joy or that calm or that peace space is for you. And then now with your eyes opened or closed, gently move your eyes towards the right. And as you breathe in and out, just notice, did your body get more tense or calmer? Is it easier to feel connected to this when you look towards the right? From zero to 10, did did you go higher up towards the 10 or lower towards the zero? And then move your eyes into the center and notice again, from zero to 10, how strongly do you feel connected to this peace, calm, grounded space? As you breathe in and out. And now just gently move your eyes towards the left, breathing in and out. Noticing what it feels like when you're looking towards the left. Do you have a stronger connection to that space? Do more reflections or memories come up in connection to it when you're looking here? Zero to 10, are you closer to the zero or closer to the 10? And just take note. And now just kind of take a big deep breath. Come back to the center, blink your eyes a little, just roll your shoulders, stretch your head out. (sighs) Kind of shake out your hands, shake your feet, tap down your arms. Sort of give yourself a little squeeze and tap. Mm. Oh, thank you. So Donna, uh, maybe you can share. What that was like for you and anybody at home while Don is talking, see if it resonates or not. Mm-hmm. So something I noticed is that with shades down or eyes closed, um, I seem to be in a better place of sort of retreat and relaxation. And it existed also when you encouraged me to look to the right and to open up my breathing because as soon as I opened my eyes, I paused for a second to look and notice, and I stopped the breath. Uh So then I immediately started to feel much of a different sense in my body of letting relaxation come and feeling that my mind was less racing. Mm -hmm. It felt differently looking towards the front on a focal point. Um, And I didn't notice any other memories or anything come up in looking to the left. That was different than to the right, where I could imagine some memories of grandparents, family, memories of the beach, the ebb and flow of the water, and the sounds, the sounds of nature around me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So what it's a good example of just showing that different things will come to mind when we're looking in different directions. Mm -hmm. And um, to go deeper with it, I do have um, a self-spotting card called self-spotting, brain spotting on my website that people can always get. See, when we put the comments down, we can give that link. Mm -hmm. The the other thing that I was thinking of while you were talking was that some of the different senses started to emerge when you're looking in a different direction. So in brain spotting, we talk about how we get access to that deep subcortical brain Um, because when we're focusing on a spot, our eyes are are constantly in motion. So when we're focused on one spot, it's like still eyes, still mind. And we can go deeper into that subcortical brain and into our deep physiology. So when you are focusing in one way, you're orienting there and all of that part of your brain really from like our midbrain and our brain stem and our, our limbic brain is really on board around helping us to orient and focus and have access 
to that information. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and what about for other individuals that appear to notice more of a negativity bias in thinking? And we were talking about Dr. Daniel Amen and these automatic negative thoughts or sometimes racing thoughts, um, the sort of fortune telling ants. There's different types of automatic negative thoughts, right? They don't right. just one often. There's right. a more... <laughs> Sometimes that can be self-doubt or a fear right now, um, what's going to happen, future telling. Um, so what are, what are your thoughts around that? You know, I think that a number of things around it. So when we live life and we have experience, we're taking in our environment. So all our senses are involved and that goes deep into our subcortical brain and into our memories and into our associations. And in moments, we have thoughts and ideas about our different experiences. And that kind of builds up over time. So either similar experiences connect to similar thoughts. So like there are neural pathways are building these connections deep in our subcortical brain. And so when I have a physical experience. Like even if you say a word to me, I'm going to have a certain association with that word. And that that may be a kindness, a sweetness. It may be a bitterness based on my own past experience or familiar connection to that word. Mm -hmm. So with our thoughts, I don't know sometimes which comes first, the chicken or the egg. You know, um, years ago when I studied core energetics, we always talked about energy and consciousness. So it's like thoughts and physiology at the same time. So it's sort of hard sometimes to weed out which is which. But I think a lot of what we're discovering by doing the brain scans and imaging brains is that we're beginning to see the depth of the physiology almost before the thought. But what happens is I have an experience and as a human being, I need to make meaning out of it. So I will attach a meaning to, to my experiences. And over time, some of those meanings become habitual ways of thinking. Mm-hmm. And some of those habitual ways of thinking are negative thoughts, mm-hmm. right? So what Dr. Amen talks about are these automatic negative thoughts because over time, they, it becomes from an awareness of knowing that I'm having it to this very sub kind of like subconscious sub even a subcortical association that I'm not even aware that I'm thinking that way. And I think right now, sort of like the record player running in the background on the same groove. Mm -hmm. Right. And some of that happens because of our anterior cingulate going back all the way back to our caudate nucleus, which has that job of going from thought to thought to thought to thought that gets stuck. Mm -hmm. Like when there's something right now, it's like something to worry about. Like I got to go grocery shopping, wear my rubber (laughs) gloves and I'm I'm scared to go shopping, you know? Um, So how am I going to deal with that fear or, and what, you know, do I have the, do I have that fear? And then I can shift to like, okay, well, I'm going to problem solve it. Maybe I can pool with some neighbors and nobody's going to often. Maybe we can get hire a shopping service, like seeing what can be done around that fear. Mm-hmm. Or I get caught in the fear and it kind of grips me so tight. I don't, I can't have logical thinking go with it. Right. You know, then we go into that repetitive thinking. Mm-hmm. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Well, and it's been so effective, you know, from, from joining in some of the trainings that have been hosted um, inside of the Amen clinics, you know, many of our staff and physicians joining in on that. Um, so this has been really very rich educationally to enhance practice. Um, right. So if you take one of those thoughts and you do some brain spotting process on it, it can really help bring that bring the brain back on board so that you can have, you know, it's like we were from the bottom of the brain, like that reptilian brain, the mammalian brain up towards the neocortex, because I can't just cognitively think my way into a better feeling. 
mm-hmm. because my body doesn't feel those thoughts mm-hmm. so easily. I mean, maybe you can, but I have found over the working with this that it's such an effective way of helping to reorganize the, those loopy thinking thoughts. Very much. Absolutely. Certainly helps with that processing. Dr. Grin had one of our physicians at the New York Amen Clinics also shared a remark. So Dr. Michael Grin says, as a physician in my practice, I found brain spotting to be a creative new tool to add to my toolbox of therapies. And that has potential to effectively help my patients to harness the power of their own brains to process emotional trauma, daily stress and anxiety, as well as helping them work with performance enhancement. I especially like that I've been able to combine brain spotting with other other therapy techniques I use, such as hypnotherapy, mindfulness-based stress reduction, and meditation. So this is this is really helping from again a psychiatrist perspective um, with many of the patients that that he sees um, over time, and it's it's been a beautiful gift to have um, many of you come in and lead trainings um, for clinicians, for our staff, and for others in the community. Um, and so I thank you, you know, for, for sharing that here with us today to introduce us. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Donna. And also I thank you because you also opened the doors for me in Atlanta with, um, Tom Bowen down here. And Tom has been so helpful for opening the doors for brain spotting trainings here as well. And Dr. Amen has been very supportive of it too. And it's been wonderful that doctors here. In addition, I remember when I first moved down here, they sent me to you because of my phone number, because I had a New York number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, we got to, to get connected that way. Absolutely. Well, I'm so delighted that we've had that, had that time and that connection. And, you know, always happy to share resources as a as united community, supporting better brain health, resiliency, and healing, especially at a time like this. So this is such a, a great gift. And I, I both thank you for your time and and your insights and for sharing that here together. And Thanks. One thing I wanted to say, what you just said from the doctor is that brain spotting is an integrative model and it's meant for clinicians to integrate it into what they're already doing versus needing to learn like a whole new way of working with their clients with a whole new structure. And it's really a very organic process to support clinicians with their clients and with using what they've already been taught. Absolutely. However, we just kind of work a little bit different, as you said in the beginning, because we work with staying in the tail of that comet of the client leading. So sometimes the training is about helping people learn to work differently. Yes. But it's very effective. Yeah. Okay. So at this time, when others are looking for information, where should they go? So there's the, um, when I was talking before about the self-spotting, I was suggesting that people can get that from my website. So that's www.synthesis, C-Y-N-T-H-A-S-I-S.com, or they can also just use my name, Cynthia Schwartzberg. And then I also do have trainings available that are at this point online, but we'll see how things work out. And then there's all over the world, there's brain spotting trainings happening. And that's at brainspotting.com, which is David Graham's uh, website for brain spotting and more information on that as well. And then the other thing that we have is the Southeast Brain Spotting Institute. So if people want on the second Thursday of every month, we do kind of like a lunch and learn on there. And that will be available for People. The next one is in May, and that's on pain. Mm-hmm. And then every about every other month, and it will be listed on the site. Oh, and so working with pain and brain spotting. That's so timely, and um, you know, at this time too, where folks are looking to use this sort of telemedicine platform, you know, for virtual access to care and for treatment. It's great to know that you're there, and that there are others in this global community that are here to support you know, and our, our physicians and clinical team, you know, have been, been part of this process. Joining many of the trainings, we will have a few as well that will be scheduled and hosted 
at the Amen Clinics also in New York in the fall. Um, so you can find more on the amenclinics.com website. And, you know, just knowing too that you have, you know, physicians and other partners in care in, in this clinical team and partnership is, is really instrumental for help, for, for timely healing in our community and especially the self-care for many of our healthcare workers. So it's great to know that you're doing um, some of the work in consultation sessions for individuals and making some of these um, access points through, through virtual. Yes, so thank you. <clears throat> and thank you all for being here as well and, and joining us. Um, so we uh, wish you the very best for health, for wellness and for brain health. And um, thank you again for this gift of time and appreciate you, Cynthia, for joining us. You're so welcome. And I also do want to wish everybody um, good health and good safekeepings. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care and have a beautiful day. You too. Ciao.